The first thing is on the how to, we've all got to take a step. So what's the initial thing? The initial thing is people that right now are standing and right now in the sound of my voice, all campuses, digital family, loop as well. Here we are. And you have never taken that step to be an initial giver, to just jump in. And let me just tell you this. We've been doing all of this in our church without you. What could we do with you? This is a big group of people for you to jump in. Now, what keeps you from doing that? When it's a deep want to, what keeps you from doing that? Three things, debt, doubt, and defensiveness. I got so much credit card. I mean, I there, how am I gonna do this? You see my car payment, my house payment? Doubt, will God provide for me if I take a step? If I really give, seriously, will he provide for me? Defensiveness, I, I don't even, I don't know that you even need to be talking about this. I mean, you're kind of getting in my business now. You take that initial step, it's courageous and it's exciting. And you take that initial step. When I was a teenager, I became a Christian at 16 and my church gave a message like this and I realized, oh, okay, tithing, it's a blessing. Yeah, I wanna give, sure, I wanna, yeah, right. And I was a sacker at Randall's as a teenager. So always tip your sacker, he may be your pastor one day. Okay, so you need to do that. I made $3.50 an hour. And I would get about 20 to $40 in tips every, every time I would work. And every time I would get those tips, I would come home and out of that $20, I'd take $2 and I'd put it in an envelope. I'd take $4 and put it in an envelope. If I really racked it up on a Saturday morning of 40 bucks, I'd take that little check. I mean, what did, what, and I'd give it every week proportionately to the Lord. So my $35 would go to the church. I don't think I changed the church, but the church changed me with that. And students, I want you to know, you start now. You start as small as you possibly can because it's a whole lot easier to tithe on 40 bucks than it is to tithe on 40,000. You jump in and you trust the Lord with that. The second one is that there's an intentional giver. Yeah, you've given, yeah, you're part of it, but there's really not an intentionality. It basically comes down to, did you cry during the video? You know, that's what it comes down to. And if you cried during the video or you were inspired during the video, then you go, well, I guess so. And you're like, you know, hey, every time I get to the cash register and say, would you like to give a dollar to kids that are struggling with such a, I give my dollar. I'm very intentional with that. No, that's not what we're talking about. Intentional, planned, prioritized. That each time you receive money, you say, Lord, I thank you. And I give you the first fruits, first fruits to be able to do that. And that might be a spot that you're like, you know what, pastor? We just hadn't been where we need to be as a family. We just hadn't. I, I, I could give a thousand excuses. We just haven't. And we need to take that step. A surrendered giver. Now your giving actually begins to drive your life. Instead of your purse driving your life, instead of your car driving your life, instead of your house driving your life, instead of your debt driving your life, your giving is driving your life. What if the biggest check you ever wrote each month was giving? Wouldn't that be incredible and awesome? surrendered what, Lord, I want my life to be driven by your heart and I wanna walk in that way. And then lastly, a lifetime giver, a legacy giver to say, Lord, I wanna give of my life. I want them talking about how generous I was at my funeral, not about my stuff. Hey, thanks for watching. To find out more about Houston's First, you can subscribe to our channel or you can go to houstonsfirst.org.